Hello, uh, welcome back to the Mammoth Den uh, for episode 9 or 10. I've kind of lost track. Um, sorry. Uh, but I know we were just downstairs going over the body of, of the arcade unit and how the uh, the control board was going to sit on it. And now we're back upstairs. I know, it's a roller coaster. But I wanted to give you a walkthrough of uh, the control deck because um, I think I've officially reached a point where it's finished and it looks awesome. <laughs> Check it out. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Got uh, full-on LED buttons. Um, the whole kit that I bought was like 80 bucks on Amazon and uh, comes with four joysticks, um, universal directions. Um, there's not really player one, player two, player three, player four specific about them. You set that up yourself however you want. Um, the buttons uh, came with it. I think each color, each player came with uh, four, eight buttons total. So I'm only using four of these for players three and four. But players one and two, I'm using six. And then I actually got something extra special on the sides there with the extra two blues on either side for uh, pinball flippers. I don't actually have pinball games yet. I have Sonic Spinball, um, <laughs> and it, so it's fun. But I haven't actually got them, those hooked up yet. I'm going to have to do something fancy with the wiring because that, that button on that end apparently doesn't reach all the way over here where my USB controller is. Um, and I'll show you how that's set up underneath. But also, um, it's four players, but I do have an additional glowing orb trackball. It's... Um, pretty standard. I think it's like just under three inches wide. It's it was like thirty bucks. It was pretty cheap. But it's got two different light modes. One of them is red. But in order for me to get the red, I have to have a button attached to it. And if I hit the button, it'll trigger the colors. But I don't mind it being green. I think it's pretty. So I'm just gonna stick with that. Uh, but yeah, here it is, like in all its glory and all its chrome trim around the outside, looking all legit. Now the case underneath, you may have seen, um, I don't know if I've shown this since I painted it, but it was just the case that we built um, a while back. And this is really just like shy of three inches tall, um, just so that all the all the wiring and everything that's underneath this deck um, will show, like I have a place to comfortably set without, without showing, rather. Um, the... Um, the artwork is of my own design. Um, just found some cool stuff online that I really liked. Something that made it feel like loud and crazy space shooter arcade stuff. And then I did a lot of, um, you know, manipulating, photo manipulating. I uh, grabbed the Mammoth Press logo and uh, put it in the front. I actually have matching artwork for the sides that I will be printing off soon and be putting on the sides of the, of the cabinet. Um, right now it's still just black downstairs right now. But... Um, a big shout out to, uh, to to Jeff Warner at the OTC Print Shop. Um, he was able to make this happen. Um, not only make it look amazing, but also did it like within 24 hours. Um, and this is it's pretty pricey, but mostly because of I actually had it laminate. <laughs> so actually, it's, so instead of getting like a, an extra sheet of acrylic that I was going to put put over all this to, to for protection, um, he was able to hook me up with. Um, with some like a, a laminate coating on it so for durability um it's a little pricey but it's totally worth it and it looks amazing so so great work by him again um he's a big uh, very valuable asset of uh, mammoth press but so now we've got a good look at the outside we, let's look at the hot mess on the inside and i'm going to get a hinge on the back of this thing so i can do this more often whenever i need to but when you flip it up Look at that, you get all that guts, and all that electronic guts. So each player um, is actually controlled by its own USB controller board. Two. There's one, and there's the other one. And each of these buttons corresponds to each of these plugins. So each of these cables go from a button to a specific spot on the board. Now it used to be that these boards were not clips like this, or like this. They weren't clips like that. There, you have a positive, you have a ground, and you have um, an LED all plugged into one male connector and you just stick it into the corresponding female connector on there. Um, and you can't get it wrong because there's bars on it to so where you, it only clicks in one way. It used to not be this way. Apparently, you used to have to have each, each individual line to just unlabeled pins and you just hope that you did it right and then hope you did it right on all of them the exact same way, and it was a pain. So, 
Um, so my heart goes out to any arcade builders of the past. Um, yeah, I got it easy compared to how you guys have it. But good news, all the buttons um, have a corresponding spot. They all are labeled on the bottom. Um, so, you know, in this case, you've got, let's see, yeah, let's see, you've got like A, B, X, Y. Um, I think there's L1, L2, R1, or R, R1, R2, or you got your shoulder buttons and then your trigger buttons. And then um, select and start, which is select for me is the coin button, and then start is the player start. So each player has its own start button. And then the joystick. And each of these have the LEDs built into them as well. So that's that third line that's on the, um, on the clips. And so long as you match those up exactly the same way on every, on every board, where you go? I can't remember. On every board, you shouldn't have any problem. They should match up all the same. Um, and then the joysticks are pretty universal. They, um, you can just go in and, and assign them whichever directions you want. You can put them in sideways, upside down, forward. There's no up, just so long as the joysticks are going through the top. Not so much for the trackball. Um, apparently my trackball, even though the logo was right side up when I installed it, uh, it was all inverted in my RetroPie. So I had to figure out through like a lot of backwards files how to go in and reverse everything. It wasn't just on Front Street. But once I got all that st set up, I was able to go into MAME, each of my handful of emulators, and uh, specifically tell it, hey, invert the X and Y axis. So now my trackball works the way it's supposed to. But in each of these, like I said, is on their its own USB controller and each USB line goes out the back, that little hole there. And then let's see if I can put this back in down one handed. Come on. There we go. Cool. Alright. All each of those lines uh, it's the it's a regular mess in the mammoth den goes to I have a I have a hub see the the pie itself that we went over the hardware with it's got four USBs one two and then there's two underneath and you can plug each player into those and call it goodsies I however have four players which I have here labeled one two three and four I have that separately plugged into position one because the uh, light ball the track ball actually has its own connection completely separate and it's that's what's plugged in here that's what and it uses a, a ps2 like kind of a serial button or um, connection and then it um it plugs into that and it's i have it's a separate adapter that turns this into a usb input and when you do it you see it sees it as a uh it sees it as a regular mouse. So, you know, when you go into mouse settings. And then here's the power switch for the Raspberry Pi. And of course, like, that's where the main power source for this board, too. So you want to have a stout power source for your Raspberry. Because it powers all the lights and powers all the buttons in this. Between these two things right here, this is all the meat and potatoes. Look at that. I even got my own multi-press, multi-cade mammoth press splash screen. And I'll show you how to do this in a little bit. Um, this is all on the software side and it turns out in order for me to show you how to set up your Raspberry Pi and the uh, the, the, uh, the flash card that goes in it and how to set up your desktop for it um, I don't have a way to re actually screen capture that I may just have to do this and put the camera up against the TV but I will show you how to set up your RetroPie and everything and once you get into RetroPie you'll see something like this. It's it's actually a much simpler desktop, much simpler dashboard, but um, this is actually one of countless themes that you can choose. Um, everything about it is customizable. Like I said, I actually put my own Mammoth Press uh, splash screen in it when it loads up. And when it loads in between games, there's a Mammoth Press bit that goes between them. Um, just artwork that I put in and told it when to do it and when to play it. Um, you can put your own videos in there. You can put your own animations in it. I have some Mammy animations that I want to do, like segues, um, like an opening video. Every time I start it up, boot it up for the first, you know, whenever I boot up the, the machine, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, that's a lot of things to get into, um, but initially what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up your, your, your Pi's uh, SD card. 
boot it up, and then um, all the systems, the, all the system settings that you'll need to do right away, like your network setup, your Bluetooth setup, and your updates. Um, and then from there, I'll probably have some other videos trickling of all the cool special features that you can do. But um, for now, I wanted to focus on just getting it all together and set up. But here's the thing, if you didn't even want to build a cabinet, if you just wanted the case with all the hardware in it, and I mean, heck, you see how small that is, guys? Like, I can put that, I can actually mount that with a Velcro strip into this. And all you have to do is just plug this into a TV. Or, or push it up against the wall with a TV-mounted wall, like a wall mount. And that's all the arcade that you need. I mean, I'm more than happy to, to build whatever you want. Um, in fact, that's kind of the... <laughs> A big question that's been asked around is um, people asking how much and how how long. Um, I've been learning this since I started. I've been learning it as I went, um, and honestly, it, this is pretty much near complete. It's um, I, I have a couple of aesthetic things to do to change up, add some trim to the body, and put some artwork on the sides. But other than that, this thing is done, and I could say fully say. And I took a few days off, so I can honestly knock one of these out from scratch from the beginning, doing exactly what I just did within a week or like in about a week um, no more than two weeks and uh, and I could do this for significantly cheaper than what you can find any other build online especially if all you want is just this case because I mean you know with this and the Raspberry Pi like everything you need is right here it's it's all there it's it's you know you can, I mean hell I've been playing games with this like sitting in the chair with this on my lap um, <laughs> so I mean, it's not ideal, but it's good for setting up the buttons. I wanted to take a minute to thank everybody. Again, I say it every time, but thank you for pushing this stuff around, making it a big deal. Um, this is kind of a wave that I'm wanting to run with, and uh, right from the beginning, people were very supportive. Not just like, oh, look at you, you're doing something. It's like, it just seems like there's a lot of people who want to do the same thing. So this isn't the only one I want to do. Um, next time around I want to do it but I want to actually have like uh, I want to have like videos of me actually doing it not just me explaining what I did after you know uh, more of a tutorial than a, than a video diary um, but if you have any questions or um, at all like on, on how I did this or other ideas um, or other versions I want to do like a bar talk arcade I want to do one of those cool coffee table arcades I mean I have so many different ideas I want to do um, and so much artwork that I want to put on an arcade unit I think it would be awesome and uh, to anybody out there who's like independently developing their own video games, I can I, I have an arcade set up for just indie games <laughs> that um, I could I could feature on arcade units. But anyways, that's that's a later time thing. But again, thank you, thank you to everyone who supported this and uh, supported me. All the donations, <laughs> um, all the um, let me borrow tools. Um, We'll, uh, we'll have to sit down and, and figure out the recordings before I finally do a wrap-up video and featuring certain games and certain people that I've invited to come and, and, and hang out. Um, as you can see, it's not exactly COVID-friendly as far as social distance goes, but if you don't mind, I don't mind. <laughs> um, but until next time, till we, uh, till we tackle the software video, uh, thanks again.